Hey guys, welcome to another episode of I Sorta of Talk Crap But Don't Talk Crap on Different Martial Arts. Guys, I'm Dan the Wolfman, and uh, I made a video that's getting great views and, and people seem to really like it, even in the Aikido community. I, I just filmed a couple days ago called Aikido Mostly Sucks But. Well, today I'm going to tackle, and look at that, I'm going to tackle Wing Chun. Wing Chun mostly sucks, except. So, today is Wing Chun mostly sucks, except, and for you Wing Chun practitioners out there, hopefully you take it with a grain of salt and hear what I have to say. Guys, for those not familiar with me, I have done martial arts for like 33 years, all kinds of different styles. I have um, uh, competed in MMA professionally six times. I have fought in two Daido Juko Kudo World Championship fights, which we'll talk about in a minute, uh, which is kind of like MMA with a helmet on, but you could headbutt an elbow and go to the ground for 30 seconds, kind of street MMA. Uh, been around before UFC and uh, before Pancrase and whatnot, starting like 86. And um, I've had multiple advanced grappling tournament matches. I've bounced for 23 years off and on. I've had some hairy situations, multiple opponent weapon fights, and things of that nature. So, guys, you can check me out at thecombatsystem.com, thecombatsystem.com, or focusdojomma.com. So, Wing Chun. Oh, we're going to go down that rabbit hole. Wing Chun. Um... I have trained Ji Kune Do quite a bit in my years. Um, really, I started cross training when I was just a Taekwondo guy. And then I started sparring different guys when I'm like 16, 17, 18 years old. And going to different gyms and like getting hit for real the first time, like 17, by a growing ass man doing at a kickboxing gym. Um, but it did that after reading Tao Ji Kune Do. And of course, I always studied martial arts since I was nine years old. But a lot of the influence was from Bruce Lee. And of course, Bruce Lee, Ji Kune Do, has roots in Wing Chun. So I'm going to try to focus on Wing Chun, but a lot of what I'm going to show you is really like JKD because to get practical, a lot of it is more JKD. Uh, but I'm going to try to talk try to talk about Wing Chun, but it's hard to sort of separate the two when looking for examples and whatnot. Um, anyway, but I have trained uh, JKD quite a bit back in the day, like between 98 and I think like 2001, 2002. Um, there was... There was two main uh, Jeet Kune Do schools that I would go to and train Jeet Kune Do and Muay Thai and um, Shudo and then Shudo and Jiu Jitsu and blends and uh, Muay Thai Savat blends before it was popular to do that and, um, and all that. Also, um, just before I fought Yuki Kondo, the Pancreas champion, who everyone in the world was turning down the fight scare because he destroyed great jiu-jitsu guy I later trained with for a year, Solo Ribeiro, he destroyed him through the ropes bloody in 22 seconds. So just before, I was, leading up to that fight, pretty much, I trained for a few months in Ving Sun from a, an Italian math professor at the university I was attending. So the, the, the Ving Sun that I got was really high level because he was a very, very intelligent guy and could explain concepts and theory and, and, and how that relates to application really well. How most Wing Chun guys, why Wing Chun mostly sucks, is they become trappy, happy, slappy, dappy, trappy, 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 trappy. They forget about, oh yeah, supposed to hit the guy while they're getting hit in the face. So the p p purpose of trapping is to clear the way to your own fighting your own punch to hit the damn guy and use forward pressure so most Wing Chun guys become trappy happy no it has to be this there's this there's this there's this there's this and yes biomechanics are important but they 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 see the finger and miss the moon most guys and I've stopped by a lot of Wing Chun schools in my time and visited and watched and things like that so uh, just like I do with all martial arts so um, but guys, so I did train a bit, bit of Wing Chun, which will lead me to the footage I'll show you in uh, my fights between 2000 and 2001 where I use some Wing Chun. I even have a picture that looks like I must have done a really nice Tan Sao and Punch um, from a famous uh, Japanese photographer, Susumu uh, Nagao. Nagao? Nagao. Sorry, I'm sorry. Kominosai, if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Anyway, I got a great picture. Maybe I can upload that as, as the picture for this video. I'm not sure yet. 
But, um, okay. So, we're going to go over footage, a lot of my footage first, but then I'm going to show you good examples of Wing Chun that is out there on the internet. The very few, very few good examples in real sparring or real fights of Wing Chun out there. Because trust me, I've gone down this rabbit hole before. I used to have all the good videos on my old YouTube page, just like good videos, all kinds of martial arts on my old YouTube page before some dastardly people shut it down. Had all kinds of rare footage on the combatsystem.com. Now I'm on catchjitsu.com and we finally built back up the subscribers. Almost. I had 16,500 before. I'm at 14, 14,500 now, guys. So please sub, uh, thumbs up and sub if you like this. Um, so what is Wing Chun good at? Maybe we'll go to the videos and we'll talk as I go along. Okay. So guys, I'll try to show you the good footage. And trust me, there's all kinds of bad footage. And if this video is a little wax because I didn't charge my battery, I was dumb. Okay, guys, here's me fighting. This is a new video compilation I put together. Bruce Lee's favorite technique, straight blast, using actual MMA fights, and you'll see me use it in training and even on the ground. Um, and then, so let me show you this, and then we'll talk. That's what we'll do. This was important. We'll do a video. We'll talk. We'll do a video. We'll talk. So chain punching is by far the biggest technique that Wing Chun is known for and Bruce Lee modified it to be a little more sideways and running through the guy. This starts with a boxing blast here against the amazing fighter uh, Jeremy Horn. But, well that was really fast. <laughs> Got him, I'm fast. So it was just a boxing blast. I didn't really hit him. Okay, that's kind of Wing chun -y. I intercepted, kicked that leg. Here's a blast, my chin was up in the air. That's not good. But there's a chain punch. That was more real chain punching. That was pretty square. Uh, that's a guy who kind of came in a spar, Ukrainian guy. Became pretty good friends with him after that. Even saw him in the street once in Vegas when I was attending the UFC. And yelled out from the cab. Showing how to straight blast. My old Ehow video in 2009. If you want to learn how to straight blast, that video is out there in Ehow or Expert Village. And how to use it on the ground after no Soto Gary. So it can be really useful in here. I'm showing ground trapping, which I showed to some JKD guys back in the day. How to use trapping on the ground to set up punches, to set up passing, to set, mostly to set up elbows. And here's some kind of straight blasting off my back against Yuki Kondo. And here's Dido Juko, big hook. But then I kind of go into a blast there before getting hit with some headbutts. And an uppercut, and then kind of a straight punch, I think. And some more headbutts he nailed me with. So... Did I talk about the blast against Kondo? So, where was it? Right here. It doesn't look the best, guys, but you can count like five punches, I think, and then I threw hook because elbows weren't allowed. So the hook went too deep. But um, had there been elbows, maybe, but look at my forward pressure. It got in his head, and that's one thing that this technique does really, really well. Um, it can be a great fight starter for the beginning of a fight. So, um, Yuki Kondo, very experienced fighter, one of the most experienced fighters in the world, then and now, one of the top ten most experienced fighters in the world, fought, after I fought him, he fought Tito Ortiz for his light heavyweight UFC title. He s mentioned me and talked about me uh, quite a bit in an article in SRS, um, Japanese MMA magazine, one year later. He talked about how he was scared that he had just destroyed the super famous world champion jiu-jitsu guy, and then he was fighting a no-name guy like me. I think I had like three fights. Um, so, he was like, oh my god, he came out and he, uh, he didn't know, what he, he didn't even know how to describe it to the interviewer. That was, he just came out and like blitzed his face. <laughs> so, if, if a real top, most experienced pro, and that's why I did it, I was actually also very sick. Turns out guys, I have lupus. Um, but I was very sick before the fight and always got a flu. I've been sick now for 13 days. Uh, I'm sick a lot. Um, so I knew I had to go at him right away, and I even told the press that, and they loved it. I said, I'm like a wounded samurai. I know I have to go for him because I have no idea how long my cardio is going to last. But I, I picked this technique to start with because I had to show the more experienced fighter something he hasn't seen before to try and get a psychological advantage. Now, I lost the fight, but I did get a psychological advantage from that and from that little punch blitz from my guard. Very rarely do you even see that through years of MMA. Have you rarely seen anything like a punch blast or really aggressive striking from bottom, especially how to rotate your shoulders off the mat to get some leverage and things like that. Um, so the straight blast or change punching um, in Wing Chun is probably 
the most important thing, the uh, Lin Wan Kun, Lin, Lin Wan Kun, Lin Wan Kun, Kun technique. Um, I'm going to show a couple more examples of me using this in sparring. This is their best technique is going forward. Going forward with forward pressure. And that can be applied to a bunch of other techniques, specifically for combatives for self-defense. That's something that Wing Chun gives us very well. Now up close, I like to vertical punch with the bottom three. I don't like to run with a high center like a Paul Vunak does. Even his logo is like a cycle and he lips like this. I like to, look at my videos, I punch, I drop one, and then I fire the next hand straight from the center line forward. And that's kind of for closer range. A little longer range, I'll do a karate two-step punch like the counter technique that, um, that I learned from Lyoto Machida and Chinzo Machida when I was uh, Lyoto's sparring partner. I'll use the top two punch vertical punch quite a bit nowadays, but at closer range, like in a bar fight, if you were going to preemptively strike one, two, three, grab the head, elbow, knee, the nuts, and cut the nagi head and armsman, that kind of stuff, that's a very good technique to practice quite a bit for combative. So just talking about the forward pressure. And guys, I'll go to more traditional Wing Chun uh, videos in a second. Look at my hands here. I was doing some traditional Wing Chun there. I learned that from watching, I think, Yusuke, Yusuke Fuke in Pancrase fight early on. There was a straight blast. It got me to the clinch, got me to a chin strap, cow catcher, and got the tap with the Cobra Nightcrake oh. here against this. I think he fights in deep, lighter fighter, but... Oh. That guy fights in the UFC, well, fought in the UFC, now in Ryzen. Good boxer. Good, good jiu -jitsu guy on the ground, too. Uh, Wing Chun, I did an oblique kick there, uh, which Wing Chun also uses. And there's the oblique kick into the chain punch which is still a very good technique that can be used for closing distance, for getting the clinch. I even tweeted Henzo Gracie that when he was fighting Kondo. Like, you could use the straight blast, learn the straight blast really fast. It doesn't have to be great just to get you to the clinch as a grappler. It, it can be, and it, and it can get you to the dark side of the back side for a takedown. I'll show a video uh, in a second uh, about that, how you can do that. So, Wing Chun Bads. Slappy, happy. Wing Chun Bads. Most people with vertical punch, not the strongest punch in the world. It's not like a full power cross. Now, I, you can get good power with it. I, I do have pretty good power with it. I can show how to make it a push, but I can really heat deep in the body and do Bruce Lee's one-inch punch. I have a video teaching that you guys might want to look at on a kid, but I show how I can make him fly back really far because you can make it more like a push. Now, I can make it more like a push and a hit, so internally the power goes deeper. And people are like, oh, that's not true, man. Well, then until I hit you, you don't know. Um... So, um, trappy happy instead of clearing the pathway to hit. So that's why my Ving Sun instructor, the mathematician that he was, is about geometry, clearing the hands, and going, okay, what it does good is mostly about attribute develop. It's mostly good on the ground for top guard or bottom guard. That's where Wing Chun really can, can be useful because you're in that distance. So let's look at some more, and then we'll talk more about in that distance and how Wing Chun sucks, except here's I'm showing how to use it against a jab. And the first one is a punch block. It's not meant to hit him. It's just meant to intercept the jab. So you get your foot on the outside gate, a guy who jabs a lot, and then you can enter. And see how that punch intercepted, and I can go in with the chain punches or straight blasts. Put a straight blast here now. Some of the sideways or like a bagong stance. Get my MMA, go for my grappling. I got his back exposed. Okay, maybe I just clinch him. Or I go here and knee lift bump up. Or I get across here and a Kazushi Washi Okay? Like you've seen the old Machida and Holloway do. And maybe even Frankie Edgar ones. No, Frankie Edgar does the uh, Akiyama sometimes. Um, it's really good for street self defense. And even if you think. I wasn't hitting him in the head because. I had a tough, uh, tough Ukrainian uh, Olympian with me here, a rower, but he uh, didn't have a mouth guard that day. Okay, so uh, we'll talk about attribute development here in Chi Sao. Let's talk about range. Wing Chun, why does it suck? Mostly. As a standalone art. Just like the Aikido video, does it suck in what it's good at? No, it doesn't suck at what it's good at. 
as a standalone art for most now it doesn't mean a few exceptional people can't really fight with it in any style a few exceptional people would be exceptional no matter what style they did because they're dedicated and they dream about it at night and they're thinking about geometry and their spatial intelligence and they have kinesthetic intelligence so they can feel and have sensitivity whether they're doing jujitsu or kung fu or whatever so <laughs> those people you, you you can have a badass in tai chi and there's a few of them because they'd be a badass no matter what style they did. Why do people not get that? Because, oh, I have to train the best style, and then I'm a badass. No, most people are not badass. I don't care if they're jiu-jitsu. I hit them in the face. I don't care if they're Muay Thai, okay? They're better. I mean, they have a faster rate. Both those styles have a faster uh, ROI, return on investment. That's important to know. It's obvious. But... That doesn't mean that after a year that if they weren't a fighter in their heart and their mind that they're not really a fighter. It means they have some techniques and maybe somewhat used to getting hit, but as soon as you really rock them, they fall apart like a deck of cards falling down. So, why Wing Chun sucks for the most part is that it focuses mostly, now they have some long-range kicks, but it focuses mostly a trappy happy in the trapping range. Why is that especially why Wing Chun stands out and doesn't hold up well? Usually, unless someone's really good against other martial arts. It focuses on the range that is the weakest range in natural fighting. Because natural fighting, and my problem with Kali is all the fancy disarms in the mid-range. Kali, you want to know the inside, and you want to know the outside. That's what's important. When you see the Sayo Kali guys fighting out in the sticks, you see it's outside, or the, the, the dog brothers, it's big outside he hefty gorilla movements, and then bam, it's a clash into the grapple, whether it's standing grapple or ends up on the ground. Wing Chun. Wing Chun focuses on the trappy, happy range. Be be inside of boxing range and somewhere outside of clinch range but yet boxers clinch all the time and that's supposed to be illegal they're not supposed to oh my god is Dan the Wolfman part of the Illuminati no yes I don't know I mean I did infiltrate 10th planet for two and a half years and rolled with Joe Rogan all the time I don't know but what is it maybe it's a portal to activate your higher eye Maybe you should bow to people this way as an acceptance between master and student and student to student. Or before you spar, it's a passage of knowledge. Maybe it's about the triangle, the pyramid. And maybe it's about how 45 degrees Yon Jun Go is important in almost all things in martial arts. All your throws, a lot of your submissions, takedowns, everything. Find the balance, break the structure, 45 degrees. I don't know, maybe. I mean, it might just be something I came up with. Um, but anyway, the trappy happy range. So boxers clinch all the time. They're not supposed to. People get hit and they reach. You see in street fights, you see professionals do it all the time. You get tagged good and boom, there's a headlock. So people that aren't even trying to grapple end up in a grapple, end up in a clinch. So, yeah, guys, if the camera work stinks today, I'm sorry. I'm hooked up to a charger. Um, that's the biggest fault. Now, I do have some footage in some of the Wing Chun versus Kyoko Shin guys. Some of those guys were good with front kicks. Wing Chun's good with forward pressure. Wing Chun's good with chain punch. Wing Chun is good with attribute development. That's where it can help most, most martial artists. So let's talk about that now. As you see me do Chi Sao Kung Fu fighting with UFC and Bellator's big country, Roy Nelson and Anderson Silva. One of the greatest of all time. Now, guys, I, uh, I'm kind of just playing, and I'm on double outside. I'd be doing better against somewhat better. Roy, Roy, Roy was legit. This is real. I'd be doing better if my right hand was on the inside. You know, one head inside, one head outside. So I'm, I'm kind of. I did the same thing with Anderson. I tried to like double fucks out there, and he used it to, to um, slap me. Oh, see that Bong Sao he did there? Tried to get him on the outside. There he did with his right elbow. Big country has some real sensitivity. Look at this. I was I was impressed. <laughs> Fortunately, I only have moving pictures. So Tom so and a park. You see, I was training mostly helping the Yodo train three months, four months for uh, three months for Ryan Bader fight, which he knocked him out, flawless victory. Um, 
But at Black House, and there you see Anderson with a wooden dummy and me doing a, a ton and punch. Um, unfortunately, I didn't with have. Profinder, I mean. Fortunately, I don't. The the cameraman took pictures instead of videos. But one of those, you can see, I actually hit him in the body. I hit one of the greatest of all time. I got to punch it on the body. Now Anderson was mostly self-taught, and you see some more Wing Chun in his later fights, because I think he really was going to Guru Dan, and his son was pretty close, and training with Guru Dan, probably one of his instructors. Now he always played around watching Bruce Lee movies, and he always played around on the Wing Chun, but not dummy, but he's the greatest of all time, he basically taught himself. What I felt with him was, did he have the true understanding of Wing Chun at that time? Not necessarily. The one time he hit me with a, uh, a double fox out, and boom, he would have, he, I mean, it would have been bam, knee, elbow, he would have nailed me. So, I think after that, he, he went and he learned more Wing Chun and Panatukan uh, Filipino boxing. Um, there is a video now that made a nice compilation recently on YouTube. You can see him. He does very good, but he became too trappy happy himself. He was trying to pull off cool Bong Sao blocks. He's done a lot of rolling elbow, I call them, or Bong Sao. Uh, let's see if I can get that Bong Sao style. Um, blocks but a lot of like I call that a rolling elbow uh, elbow wing block and elbow wing block or rolling elbow block he's done a lot of that now in the in Nick Diaz fight and Bisping fight I think especially um, so that's you know obviously if it can be done at the highest level like in the Bisping fight we're good you know pretty good puncher striker and, and Nick Diaz like man that's pretty good stuff now unfortunately he was trying to do much too much he's a playful guy that's why he was the greatest of all time but he's gotten older he slowed down a little bit but he's still doing it and he's he's and even a little bit against Adesanya I think but he's forgetting that the point is to not be trappy happy the point is to clear and hit he was not being aggressive enough so he fell into the trappings of the trapping Ooh, that's good Okay, let's see what's next, guys. Let's show you some more footage. I'm going to get you some traditional Wing Chun footage so you can understand what I'm talking about. This is my last video of mine here. I'm going with this wrestler I met for the first time. He had wrestled like eight years. It's not world class, but here I'm wrestling with him. You see I'm using Chi Sao. You'll find a lot of videos I can put together where I call Kung Fu, TMA grappling, Kung Fu, uh, Chi Sao. I label a bunch of different stuff. Oh, but look, I was doing Chi Sao, and my loose, relaxed, floating hand was there to down block his neck and head. He was kind of shooting low. Anyway, but just slam him in the ground and defend. Now, I don't know if this would fall under Wing Chun, but here, this definitely is Kung Fu. Oh, I mean, I, I think of it as Kung Fu there. I say you're a Tai Chi son at the end of this video. You're a Tai Chi son. So, um, Never get Hulu. so guys, so um, there we saw how, I got a lot of videos, how the cheese can be used, and I show how it can be used, or um, up and down hands, distracting hands, like you saw Bruce Lee in an earlier movie do, I've done, and other fighters have been using since then, distracting hands, and then how you can use that to guide the head to sensitive cross faces and stuff. Look at my, like, amazing Systema Takedown Defense video, I think there's one. Look at my John Wick video, I show a lot of cool stuff in there. Um, but I'm trying to focus mostly on Wing Chun, but you see I'm such a cross-trained guy, it's hard to do that. Okay, here's a good example Pretty good example of Wing Chun. Trust me, if the if you don't think if you're not impressed by these, well, all the other videos mostly suck. I've seen most of them. But this is Wing Chun versus Wing Chun. Now, obviously, this must be in China, or uh, you know, in Hong Kong, China, or possibly like in China Light in Taiwan. Um, 